Welcome back A to Z fans. Today I'm going to show you how to build a bioactive reptile tank just like this. Uh, I'll show you step by step how I make it and what kind of soil I use and how I make it myself. It's very easy to mix and it's very cost efficient. I think it costs less than $10 to make uh, the soil for this tank. Um, here we go. So first we're going to add some soil. I already added a little bit from a bag that I had open already. Um, so I'm going to add about two to three inches worth of soil and then I'll put some play sand on top of it. Um, what I'm using is garden topsoil. I'll provide a picture um, right now on the screen. And so once I get two to three inches of the soil, it kind of comes in clumps. So what you're going to do is you're going to break up the clumps and make it nice and kind of broken up as seen right here. And then you're going to add about an inch or two of sand and then mix it all together and then add some water and then mix that all together and then you start adding some of your um, decorations or plant material. So this is about as much dirt as I'm going to put in it. Um, as you can see it's about four, three to four inches deep. Um, pro tip Put on some gloves so your hands don't get dirty. Really easy to clean up afterwards. You just take the gloves off, wash your hands, not much dirt gets in the sink. Um, now I'm going to apply the sand. I'm going to put about one to two inches of sand so that's close to a third sand and two thirds dirt or topsoil. I'm going to do that right now and then I'll get back to you. I only had enough sand to cover about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. Uh, it should still be fine. If it's not draining properly, I can always add more and mix it up. It shouldn't take very long to do. Uh, the reason why you add sand to the mixture so that the, the water will sink to the bottom or, you know, just not kind of sit there. It'll, it'll easily drain so that you don't have any mold or anything growing in your soil. So now I'm going to mix it up completely and then add some water after that. Now that it's all mixed up, I actually think that I like the ratio. Um, this is what it should look like. It's a nice mixed sand um, slash soil mixture. Um, it's pretty soft. As you can see, it just kind of goes through your fingers. That's good because when you water your plants or whatever you put in here, it'll, it won't accumulate on the top because you don't want your reptiles drinking it off of the soil or anything because then they'll ingest the dirt or sand. That way it just hits the soil and goes right down to the plant's roots. So now I'm going to add some water. So now you're going to give it a good mix again. Make sure you, so there'll be pockets of water. Um, so just mix it all in and try and make it as moist as possible without being, you know, you don't want to squeeze it and have water come out or anything like that. So this is pretty good. I did two cups worth of uh, water. The cup size is about this big, so it's about 16 ounces, I'd say. So fully mix it, and then when it's all mixed, then you can start adding your plants. So I added some decor. I think I'm gonna put the, the rock cave over here so they can bask on the rock, and then they can sleep over here in the cool side if they want, or kind of hang out over there. So I added my plants. I added a purple cabbage. There's uh, four of them in the, in the tank. And there's two iceberg plants here, iceberg lettuce which isn't great for bearded dragons, but it's still edible and it just, I had it on hand. All these plants were extra plants that I had in the garden. So I just dug them up and transplanted them into here. I'm gonna add some water to them so that they kind of get off to a good start. Um, I also added two aloe vera plants, uh, pretty small. There's one here and one over here. Um, hopefully they'll get bigger before they get disturbed. I kind of tucked them in the corner because bearded dragons are really good at digging and just kind of messing up your whole tank. So the tank, more than likely tomorrow, will look nothing like this, but I mostly put these plants in to look nice for now, and then they can also eat off of them. If they eat them all today, that's perfectly fine. Um, just something for them. It's, it's new for them, so they'll be able to check out the tank, and you know it's all edible, they can eat it all. Uh, the red acre cabbage I had in the backyard also, fun fact, 
all the leaves on a cabbage plant are edible. So you can, you know, you'd have to wait for a head of cabbage to come in. Uh, so often I go out and I'll just pick a leaf off and I'll feed it to the bearded dragons. Um, it's good for them. This tank is pretty much done. So I'm going to add the bearded dragon now and see how they like it. All right, here we go. He knows there's a female bearded dragon in this room. <laughs> he saw her before I put her in. But uh, this is a standard 40 gallon breeder tank. Um, I have a UVB over here and heat lamp over here. Um, it has a slide top lid. Um, also, one step that you want to do is you want to add bugs. Um, so I do uh, roly polies. Uh, the roly polies are also known as pill bugs. I ordered, I think, 13 or 15 from eBay for $10 or so. It's kind of pretty, pretty expensive if you ask me, but um, they started breeding like crazy. So now I have probably close to 100 in my other bioactive tank. Um, so I'm going to, tonight, I'm going to go and take them because if I, if I uncover them now, the bearded dragons in that tank will just go and eat them all. So I'm going to do that tonight when the lights are out. I'm going to scoop up maybe 10 or so of them and put them in this tank at night so that they can go and burrow. Um, one of my favorite things about a bioactive tank is that you can feed your bearded dragon as, as much you know, plant material as you want. And whatever they don't eat, the pill bugs, and I also add uh, dubia roaches. The dubia roaches and the, the roly polies will come out at nighttime and they will eat all the excess plant material. They eat dead material, so whatever the bearded dragons don't eat. I, uh, I feed our bearded dragons a lot of collard greens. I grow it in the garden, so I just go off and I take a, I'll break a leaf off and I'll kind of break it off with my hands into um, sizable pieces. So I added some collard greens. A lot of people like to add plant material um, into the substrate and mix it in, but I usually don't do that because um, a lot of people buy that stuff where you know, you're going to be adding plant material with your feeding, so they're not going to eat it all, or they'll throw, it, you know, they'll kick it into the dirt or uh, make a mess with the food, and that's going to get into the soil anyway. So I like to just save the money and uh, just kind of add the plant material slowly over time because they're not going to eat all their food, and it's going to get in the dirt anyways. My water every so often. Um, you don't want to overwater because you don't want it to be too moist. It's not good for the bearded dragon, so. My soil is usually pretty dry. Um, I'll provide a picture of my other tank that's been bioactive for probably six months or longer now, and I have not cleaned it out once. It's, it's been fantastic. So it's kind of a set and forget. It's really nice. Um, I like to just leave it alone and just feed them every day. And what's nice is the poop. They, you know, the beard dragons poop a lot, so the poop just decomposes in the pill bugs and Dubia roaches will also eat that. And so the tank typically does not smell, or if it does smell, it'll smell for maybe in, you know, that day a little bit, but the plants also help, you know, it smells pretty good with the dirt. Um, so it's, it's, the smell is not bad at all compared to ups, other substrates that I've used. Um, it's, it's, it's really nice. And the, the poop, it just, it eventually, it vanishes. So, you know, it's, it's barely there maybe two days later now with a bunch of pill bugs and dubia roaches in the tank. The other good thing is if the bearded dragons do come across the dubia roaches or pill bugs, it's perfectly fine for them to eat them. I'll provide a picture of my other tank. Um, so like I said, it's been six months or longer for that tank. Um, as is, I won't touch it. It's, um, you'll be able to see all the plant material, but that's just feeding the, um, the other lizards. I'll do a six month update on this tank so you can see what this tank looks like six months later. I have a top that goes up here so that they won't be able to climb out. Um, here's my other bioactive tank. Um, there's a lot of plant material over here that'll be gone in probably two, three days. Um, I just, a lot of times I will, I'll take dubia roaches from our colony. I'll put them in a container with stems of collard greens so that they can gut load on that. And then I just dump the whole cup into there. So you can see the stems right there, but the bugs will come out and eat those. Um, these sticks right here, a lot of times in spring, summer, and fall, I'll take clippings off of basil. I'll wash them in the sink and I'll just stick them in the dirt. And the bearded dragons will come up and eat the leaves and it makes the tank smell really good or the whole room really. 
and that's that's really nice eventually the leaves will just fall off into the ground and then the bugs will eat those or it'll decompose into the dirt also as you can see the dirt is pretty dry um, I have some bigger aloe vera plants here but like I said I have not cleaned this tank in six months or longer it's been really nice it's now nighttime and the bearded dragons are about asleep so I'm gonna add in the bugs see the roly polies so now I'm gonna turn off the lights so they don't see them don't add them in the daytime when the bearded dragons are awake because they'll just eat all the bugs that you just put in there you can put in uh, I put in roly polies mealworms and roaches that's my video on a bioactive tank I think probably all the substrate together was less than ten dollars if you have any questions uh, comment and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can it's pretty simple um, just don't put too much water when you're adding. I'd say one part sand to three parts dirt or four parts dirt. Um, kind of just look at how much sand is in the soil. You, want, you don't want too much sand. Um, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching my channel and I'll see you next time.